Greetings. This is update four or five. I've lost track. Um, so I've got most of the clock built. Okay, got this little gear up here. I've got all the internals going in there. We're gonna have some fun with this. And I'm putting the finishing touches on the face so that it starts to look like a clock. Um, this piece in particular, these two pieces need to spin, spin freely on their shafts. So I have to grind down the inside of this so that it does not stick on this shaft at all. That's not good. We don't want that to stick. So putting the clock together, I've tested it a few times just to get some ideas on things that I can improve. And here's what I noticed. Sanding and polishing the gears was a really good touch. I'm glad I did that. I'm sure it helped. But there's that's only half of the problem. The other half is anywhere there is a an axle, you run into the problem of the axle being too long. Specifically, the third one. If I number these in the order that they transmit power in the order that you construct them, there's one, two, three, and four, with fourth being the escape wheel axle. The, uh, the third one here this big guy that you see on the outside, his axle was too long and so the edges of the axle were rubbing against the clock housing and the further up the power chain you go the less friction you gotta have or the clock's just gonna stop. So I ended up sanding, nearly sanding off the end caps of that I had glued onto the axle to make it short enough it doesn't wobble but it doesn't stick either, that's important. The last axle that I have to affix is this, the escape wheel. I don't actually have the escape wheel or its pinion glued onto the axle yet. I'm going to hang it vertically and then set it and make sure this it doesn't wobble back and forth when it turns. I think it's wobbling a little bit. That's not good. So um, another thing that I had to do to make this work better is uh, Everywhere there's an axle, there's a little metal bearing, a little metal bearing in there. And I would, what happened was I glue it in, and then I put the axle in the bearing, and the, either the glue or the bearing itself would rub against the axle and cause friction. So I would take a small bit, the same size as the axle, like imagine this, but without the end on it. Thank you, darling. Come say hi. No? Oh, all right. She's camera shy. Um, bearings. So I glue the bearing in place, and then I'd widen it out with this, and that would break the glue. And then I'd glue it again, widen it out to make sure I didn't have any glue in there, and it would break it again over and over and over. Eventually, I super glued them in place. So you may do that. Just skip all these steps and super glue your bearing your axle bearings in place. I think they're M1, M2. And then ream them out so that there's no glue, the axles aren't, the bearings aren't pinched, there's no lip on the bearing that might rub against the axle. The axle can turn totally freely in that bearing. Um, yeah, so that's something you want to do. Uh, I probably spent an hour going through all these steps, but you could do it in five minutes if you do it in the right order. Another thing that I recommend, a problem I ran into was these little false bearings on the side where the weight string comes off. It's got a flange on the end of the. Let's see if I can get this up. Okay, so it's got an M2 or an M1 bearing. It's the same as the axle bearing in there. It goes through that the string rests on top of, and it's got a lot of weight pulling on this thing, but on the other side, there's no flange, because it just pushes through. And what I found out was that if you pull hard enough on this, it'll pull right out of this cardboard. So, if you have a way of making a flange end with uh, like a swagging tool or something, do that. Flange both ends of this so it cannot pull through the cardboard. I don't have such a tool, so I just super glued it on this side so it cannot pull out. Otherwise, your string will collapse through there. It'll pull straight through. 
and could ruin your clock if you got enough weight on it. Careful of that. Let's see, what else did I have to do? Uh, making sure your axle lengths are just perfect is going to be important. Lubricating everything. Uh, glue, skip, blah, 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 blah. Polishing the winding gear. Alright, so before I hang this up, the last thing I really need to do is get this to spin freely on this shaft. So that's going to take a few more iterations of me drilling out the center. That, oh, I'm going to eat the pizza, so I'll talk to you later. Bye.